Hi guys, I'm Mark Mendoza. You can call me Sir M. Let's mark up your maths quest today. For this video, we will be discussing the limits of trigonometric functions. But before we continue with this video, please watch the video on limits of exponential functions and limits of logarithmic functions. The links are in the description. For this video, we will be focusing more on analyzing the limits and graphs of the six trigonometric functions which are sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. So let's start with the limit of sine and cosine. Let's analyze the graph of sine x. The limit of sine x as x approaches a is equal to sine a, where a is in the domain of sine x. For example, the limit of sine x as x approaches 2 is equal to sine 2. The limit of cosine x as x approaches a is equal to cosine a, where a is in the domain of cosine x. For example, the limit of cosine x as x approaches 4 is equal to cosine 4. Now, let's have the limit of tangent and cotangent. The limit of tangent x as x approaches a is equal to tangent a, where a is in the domain of tangent x. For example, the limit of tangent x as x approaches 3 is equal to tangent 3. The limit of tangent x as x approaches c from the left is equal to positive infinity, whereas the limit of tangent x as x approaches c from the right is equal to negative infinity, wherein c is equal to the asymptote. The limit of cotangent x as x approaches a is equal to cotangent a, where a is in the domain of cotangent x. For example, we have the limit of cotangent x as x approaches 3, which is equal to cotangent 3. The limit of cotangent x as x approaches c from the left is equal to negative infinity, whereas the limit as c approaches from the right is equal to positive infinity, where c is equal to the asymptote. Finally, let's look at the limit of secant and cosecant. The limit of secant x as x approaches a is equal to secant a wherein a is in the domain of secant x. And here's the limit of secant x as x approaches c from the left and as x approaches c from the right. Let's find the limit of secant x as x approaches pi over 2. Since pi over 2 is not in the domain of secant x, we have to analyze its left-hand and right-hand limit. As x approaches pi over 2 from the left, the graph goes upward infinitely, which means that the left-hand limit is equal to positive infinity. On the other hand, as x approaches pi over 2 from the right, the graph goes downward infinitely, which means that the right-hand limit is equal to negative infinity. Since the left-hand limit is not equal to the right-hand limit, the limit of secant x as x approaches pi over 2 does not exist. The limit of cosecant x as x approaches a is equal to cosecant a, where a is in the domain of cosecant x. And here's the limit of cosecant x as x approaches c from the left and as x approaches c from the right. Let's find the limit of cosecant x as x approaches pi. Since pi is not in the domain of cosecant x, we have to analyze its left-hand and right-hand limit. As x approaches pi from the left, the graph goes upward infinitely. Thus, its left-hand limit is equal to positive infinity. On the other hand, as x approaches pi from the right, the graph goes downward infinitely. Therefore, its right-hand limit is equal to negative infinity. Since the left-hand limit is not equal to the right-hand limit, the limit of cosecant x as x approaches pi does not exist. And there you have it. Thank you for watching this video and hope you learned something today. Watch out for the next part of this video, which is about special limits.